for five minutes. Thank you, Chairman Lada and Ranking Member Matsui for holding this important hearing, and to all of you for, I know, your favorite thing to come before the Energy and Commerce Committee. Uh, as COVID-19 pandemic highlighted, the work that you all do is vital to our economy, our emergency services, communications networks, and national security. Broadband and spectrum access remains essential for every American to participate in rapidly innovating medical services, educational opportunities, crucial protections, the digital economy. So I want to focus on a number of important issues. I know you've talked about some others, but I'm always worried about emergencies, domestic abuse, and things like that. Many of my colleagues today have mentioned the expiration of the FCC Spectrum Auction Authority. Tied to the lapse in the FCC Spectrum Auction Authority are critical investments in the next generation 911. These delays are having a significant impact on our ability to upgrade 911 capabilities and modernize our emergency services infrastructure, including innovations that could have a, a profound impact on vulnerable individuals. Chairman Rosenworcel, how would advancements made through investments in NG911, such as text to 911, assist in protecting survivors of domestic violence and strengthen steps the FCC is taking to implement the Safe Connections Act? I really appreciate you asking this question. It is vital that we upgrade 911 in this country. The 6,000 public safety answering points that are out there that take our 911 calls, many of them are still operating in the analog era. We want to make sure that they have all the technologies that we would expect them to have in the digital age. So if you call, you should be able to reach out and have a discussion. You should be able to text. You should be able to send pictures and information. Your healthcare records should be available. All of those things are possible with next generation 911. They're going to make it easier for more people to safely reach out for help in crisis. So that's why I think the Spectrum Reauthorization Act, spending on a nationwide upgrade for 911, is so important. Thank you. Recent reporting has indicated that a number of websites offering mental health crisis resources across the country that are tied to the National 988 Suicide and Crisis Lifeline have shared data, data with Meta due to information collected by Pixels on their web pages. In many cases, users tap on a dedicated call button on these websites that will immediately reach 988 or a local line for mental health services. But the use of this site or button also triggers these pixels, which then transfers data to Facebook, sharing intimately personal information about the user during this time of need. These pixels and other external ID factors can then be used to match web users to their Facebook accounts or other profiles for advertising. I think we can all agree that anyone reaching out to these services for help wants to remain anonymous and should be able to remain anonymous. Madam Chairwoman, how is the FCC working with the Substance Abuse and Mental Health Services Administration and other organizations associated with the National 988 Suicide and Crisis Lifeline to ensure that personal information of Americans utilizing the service remains anonymous and protected through whatever medium they use to seek aid. We have developed a very close relationship with the Substance Abuse and Mental Health Services Administration because I want to make sure that privacy and confidentiality are part of all of our policies. But the situation you described is totally unacceptable. It, I'm not clear that it violates the Communications Act, but I'm fairly confident it violates some law, maybe involving health care. And so we'll go back to our enforcement we really do need and I mean, identify what's going on and see what we can do to help you fix that. And if it's not us, we want to be able to direct you to the right it, people to do it, it. It's a major issue. I had a suicidal young person who then got public, and it became worse. Lastly, um, I'm co-chair of the 5G and Beyond Caucus and the AV Caucus, so I'd like to focus a few questions on promoting the new technologies of future and help close the digital, digital divide. Uh, Chairwoman Rosenworcel, do you see the advent of fixed and mobile 5G as a tool for connecting communities and promoting developing technologies like autonomous vehicles? Is this a good development for consumers? Yes. Okay, the rest of the commissioners, because you should have a chance to talk. Do you agree with the Chairwoman? Is this a good, good development for consumers? Yes or no, and why? Yes, I do. Yeah. Yes, I agree as well. 
Uh, yes, I agree, and it will also help them in their working lives as we expand the ability of 5G to enhance industrial production and keep us competitive. Thanks again to all of you for being here today and for your service to the American people. Uh, and while we're talking about the FCC, Congress needs to do its job and fund the Affordable Connectivity Program. It continues to be a critical lifeline for families, and we need to ensure it remains funded. Thank you, Mr. Chair, and I yield back.